Well, welcome to the second part of this Red One camera tutorial. In the first part, we show you how to assemble the camera. So we have it completely put together right now. So we're ready to go inside the menu system and set up for exposure. Now, there are three different buttons that we're going to deal with on the camera. The first is going to be with the sensor button. We'll also take a look at the video button. And we'll also take a look into the system menu as well. Now, in our sensor button, we're going to be able to activate the menu in order to set exposure on it. So this will include the ISO, the shutter speed, and the color temperature or white balance. So if I hit the sensor button, notice we have a little menu that will pop up right on the bottom of our LCD screen. Now in those menu headings, we can toggle over to them and set each individual setting by utilizing this little toggle switch right here on the back of the camera. With the toggle switch, it will toggle down, it will toggle side to side. Also, it will have the functionality where we can turn the knob and at each little click, there will be some adjustment that we will make once we're inside one of these menu designations. So, let me toggle over to sensitivity and set the ISO setting. If I toggle down in ISO, I see an ISO rating, I can toggle down and set the ISO by turning the knob. We start off at ISO 100, and as I turn the knob to the right, you can see that it clicks in uh, smaller increments. And as the higher I go up with the ISO setting, it obviously changes the light sensitivity of the camera. Now, we have a max ISO rating of 2000 on the red one. So let me just back it down here temporarily down into a range, let's say about 400. Once we're done, we can just simply either toggle up on the switch, that will take us back to that previous menu, and now we can go to another setting and make an adjustment. So, let me head over to color temperature now. Notice it gets highlighted as I toggle over. I can toggle down, and I have several different settings that I can choose from at this point. We have an auto white balance setting, one for tungsten lighting, one for daylight, and then a manual white balance setting. Here in auto white balance, if I simply toggle down, what the camera does, it will read and sense the light source that we're in, and it will give you a color temperature rating here on the LCD. If I toggle over to the tungsten setting and toggle down, it will automatically set it to 3200 Kelvin, which is pretty typical for a studio type of setup. If I toggle over to daylight and then toggle down, it will give us a preset of 5600 Kelvin, which is normally what we'd use for outside shooting. Now if I toggle over to the right to manual white balance and then toggle down, I can now manually set the color temperature in 100 degree increments. So when I turn the knob, each degree goes up by 100 points. As you can see, the change is being made on the LCD. This way you can customize your color temperature on the camera. So let me toggle back up get to the main menu, toggle back up, and those settings are now in place with the ISO and the color temperature. Now let's say I want to change the shutter speed. I will again hit the sensor button. I can toggle over to shutter, toggle down, toggle down where it says speed, and now by me again turning the knob, and it has a little click movement to it, you can see that each click will change the shutter speed on the camera. Shutter speed in this case will continue to rise as we continue to click through that knob and it will max out at one two thousandth of a second. Let me go back the other way where now I'm turning that knob to the left and again you can see the increments changing with each click that I make with that toggle knob. I'll keep toggling to the left and move my shutter speed at this point at 1 30th of a second. So just by simply going into the sensor button which takes us into the sensor menu, we've been able to change the ISO setting, the shutter speed, and the color temperature which are the main settings you're going to need to help set your exposure for the camera. Now we can get a little bit more detailed with some of the customized settings for the camera in terms of the saturation levels, RGB levels, that will essentially be tailored to what you as a cinematographer will do with this camera. We're not going to get too deep into those, we just want to show you some of the basics of the exposure of what you will set with a camera. We also can set the frames per second, but we're going to go into a different menu now. If I go over to the system menu and press that, toggle down where it says project, 
Now I'm going to toggle over to configure. I toggle down. I toggle over to time base. I click that. And now again, as I turn the knob, I can change my frames per second on the camera. I toggle up. And you can see the changes that I made. In this case, I've gone to 24 frames per second. So the primarily thing that you will use in making changes within the menu are going to be our toggle switch and each of these buttons that will take us and lead us into several different menus within the camera. So that's a look at the resolution. Now let's take a look at what we're going to do when we want to change or activate media in our next tutorial. Now we're going to get into the utilization of media within the camera. For the RED1 camera, there are two different options you can utilize. This external drive can be utilized to capture your footage on this drive or it will be downloaded into your computer. Or we can utilize CF cards. Now, in working with the media, there's a couple of things to be mindful of. First of all, in order to format any one of these uh, different clips of media, whether it be through the drive or through the CF card, we have to go inside a menu setting in order to format the card. So in this case, I'm going to hit the system button and we toggle over to where it says media. I toggle down and I see the option of doing a format on the card. I'm going to toggle down and it's going to ask me or just tell me it's essentially that the digital magazine is not empty. Essentially it's giving you a warning letting you know that there are clips on this CF card just to make sure that you have downloaded those clips to your computer. In this case, we're going to go ahead and format the card. So I'm going to toggle over to format, toggle down, and now the formatting will take place of that card. It will give you a sign now that says the magazine was successfully reformatted. I can simply toggle up for the OK. Excuse me, I toggle down for OK. And now that takes us back. And it tells us here on the LCD that the media is at 100%, meaning it's completely empty. We go through the same function with the hard drive as well. When we format, essentially that same function into that menu is what we will do. Now, another thing to be mindful of, you just can't automatically pull the card from the camera while it is hot. There's a proper way to do that, essentially to unmount the media. So let me go back to system. I toggle over to media, toggle down, and now I toggle over to the left where it says unmount. I now take the toggle switch, toggle down. When the time code disappears from the LCD, I can simply pull out that CF card and now I can safely put another one into it in order to start recording once again. In this case, we'll take this card that we recorded clips on and we'll start doubting, downloading those into our computer. Now, in this certain configuration right now, we can take a CF card, place it in, and we're ready for recording. Now we've already gone ahead and connected our XLR to the inputs here on the RED1 camera. So how do we activate that audio? Well, we got to go into the menu here. Let's go to the system button and activate. We now toggle to the left where it says sound. I now toggle down. And now I have a couple of menu items that I need to be mindful of. One says record enable. Essentially, we have to activate any one of those four channels where we plug in some sort of audio source. So I toggle down to record enable. I'll look for the channel. In this case, it's channel two. Toggle to the right, toggle to the down, and you see it has a check mark there. Now, very important factor here. Over to the right of the side of the LCD, it has an input type. We either have microphone or line input. In this case, we've got a straight microphone input. So we're going to toggle over actually just essentially turn the knob to where it says microphone. If you're using some sort of audio mixer or taking an audio feed from a mixer, you will utilize line input. Now let me toggle back up, toggle back over to the right to where it says 48V, because now we got to send phantom power to this condenser mic. So I toggle over to channel two, toggle and check. I can now hit my exit button and take us to the main menu or actually remove the main menu and as you can see as I'm talking here that mic has now been enabled because we do have to send phantom power from the camera in order to power that condenser boom mic and you'll see the levels read out right here. Now a couple of more things about audio. Let me go back to my system button, toggle over to sound, 
toggle down. I go to output level, toggle down there, and I can begin to make adjustments to the level's output that is for my audio. Uh, simply right now, I'm just turning the knob in order to change those decibel values. I will now hit my exit button. Now, this time around, I'm going to go to the video button. Activate that. Toggle to where it says audio over to the right. Toggle down. And now I have different inputs here of the uh, channels where we can make, once again, changes to our dB levels within the camera. I can also change the headphones here where we have a headphone jack and we can listen to either left or right track or a combination of left and right as a mix. So as far as simple audio setup, that's what you're gonna do for the Red One camera. Now in most professional settings, you may have an audio mixer that goes in between the camera as well as in between the camera and going to the microphone. In this case, we're coming straight in with a condenser boom mic and that's how you would activate that mic to get audio into your camera.